Mark Brzezinski, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Ambassador Barber, for that introduction. Thank you, Mr. President, for pulling together such a terrific conference on the Arctic. I am deeply impressed by the gathering that you have pulled together here today in Iceland. Good morning. My name is Mark Brzezinski. I am the executive director of the White House's brand new, less than a year old Arctic Executive Steering Committee. But before I put my current hat on, I want to offer a personal reflection from my tenure as United States Ambassador to Sweden for the last four years. As ambassador in Sweden, I spent a lot of time with the Sami people in northern Sweden, listening and learning from them about how climate change is impacting their way of life. I visited with Sami in their homes. I traveled to Sweden's high north to bear witness to how their reindeer herding society is changing, how they now have to helicopter hay to their reindeer in the winter, how ticks are appearing on reindeer in the summer like never before. I did a series of films to memorialize Sami perspectives on how climate change is changing their way of life. And in one of those films, a young Sami leader, Nila Inga, in, from that part of Sweden that is above the Arctic Circle, had this to say, as he put it, if this climate change keeps going at this rate, I'm pretty sure the reindeer won't survive it. It goes too fast right now, and without the reindeer, the whole Sami culture will disappear, and the world will be an indigenous people poorer. Nila's message is one we should hear, heed, because our society is also threatened. The looming crisis in the Arctic is a tangible preview of the looming crisis of the global condition. So as the US government deepens and broadens its engagement in the Arctic, a starting point is to understand, to understand what is happening there and how it impacts the rest of the world. I start with that personal reflection because the Arctic is simultaneously a strategic problem and a human problem. Arctic interests are diverse. American interests in the Arctic today are diverse and important and range from native interests to national defense to maritime policy and much more. Our national policy has evolved over the years to capture this. Our national policy originated in science and, explora and exploration. It started with the Arctic Research and Policy Act of 1984, which, which focused primarily on research and exploration. That act, that piece of congressional legislation, created the US Arctic Research Commission, and it created the Interagency Arctic Research and Policy Committee, IARPIC. In 2009, policy directors on national security and homeland security were created to address the security interests I identified on the previous slide. In May 2013, the United States' national strategy on the Arctic was produced, followed by an implementation plan to implement that national strategy, clustering priorities around three lines of effort, national and homeland security, stewardship, and international cooperation. A progress report came out from the implementation plan last January, and we are underway with producing the progress report for this year to be unveiled in this coming January to capture all the activities that we have undertaken in the course of this year in the Arctic. This slide and the next slide capture the number of US government offices and agencies and departments engaged in the Arctic. There are close to 30 US agencies, departments, and offices that have dedicated initiatives and programmatic efforts pertaining to the Arctic. The diversity of agency roles, the multiplicity of these interests covered across all the different agencies of the federal government is the main reason that President Obama created the Arctic Executive Steering Committee. This slide also captures some of the agencies that are involved in the Arctic, 
and you can see even just under the executive office of the president, meaning the White House, the number of responsibilities that are there, the National Security Council to focus on the international ramifications of the Arctic issues, Council of Environmental Quality to focus on conservation and resource uh, management policy, Dr. John Holdren, the science advisor to the president who runs the Office of Science and Technology Policy, and USGCRP have oversight over Arctic science and policy, and much more. This slide depicts who is talking to whom in only one of those activities, the Interagency Arctic and Research Policy Committee housed within the US government's National Science and Technology Council. As you can see, there's a healthy amount of interagency collaboration going on. This tangled web is intimidating, but we argue that we should be worried if these lines were fewer and farther between. The density of this web is a testament to the high level of dialogue and collaboration that is ongoing among the agencies with interests within the US government among all these different areas. But it also makes clear that we need to ensure a continuing high level of coordination among our Arctic activities in order to maximize efficiency and reduce redundancy. Hence, the Arctic Executive Steering Committee was created by President Obama by executive order this past January. Less than a year old, it has a number of specific goals. First, setting priorities pertaining to the Arctic. Of all the many ideas regarding the Arctic, what are gonna be the main ideas? How do we choose priorities on the basis of whose interests and what stakes? What claims should be given the highest priority? And for President Obama, evaluating progress once priorities are set is key. So how do we rigorously and aggressively and proactively pursue priorities and evaluate progress on effective implementation of that? The second goal, to improve coherence of engagement with the state of Alaska, with tribal and native communities in Alaska, and with our international partners. And finally, the steering committee's goal is also to, to support the US chairmanship of the Arctic Council, which is underway right now. Let me talk with you briefly about one of the very first accomplishments of the Arctic Executive Steering Committee, and that is President Obama's visit to Alaska. As the ambassador said, it was historic, the first time ever, I'm kind of amazed by that, the first time ever a sitting US president had traveled to Alaska's Arctic. The higher meaning of the visit was to capture that Alaska foreshadows the challenges that we will see elsewhere, and it created a platform upon which the international community can come together on the future of the Arctic because more than 20 governments participated in the Glacier Conference held in Alaska. I wanna say a few words about the visit to Anchorage, but also to Alaska's Arctic, to Seward, to Bristol Bay, to Kotzebue, that the president took and share some photos. But I want to emphasize that raising awareness about the Arctic is key, it's key for all of us. Too few people know about it. So for the president to put his two feet on the ground in Alaska's Arctic was key. The objectives were to highlight the consequences um, of, of, the, uh, of, of climate change in the Arctic and the impacts outside of the Arctic area as well. Uh, the president gave a remarkable speech um, at, um, yeah, at the Glacier Conference, which was attended by representatives from more than 21 nations, Alaskan leaders and administration officials, and the focus of his speech was climate change and the initiatives, and, and the initiatives to deal with it. The initiatives President Obama announced included officially restoring the native Alaskan name of Denali, to, the North America, to North America's tallest mountain, which I can tell you when I was on the ground in Alaska was embraced especially by people in the native and tribal communities who were just so proud and literally were cheering for that decision. An initiative also by the Department of Interior to fund intertribal fish commissions, youth engagement programs to promote an Arctic way of life. How do you communicate the imminence of the threat of climate change with clear evidence. 
glaciers provide some of the most visible manifestations of massive climate change, and President Obama hiked to exit Glacier to um, a, the retreat of which is an indicator of the impacts of climate change in the far north. He also rode a Coast Guard cruise cutter in Resurrection Bay, where he discussed maritime opportunities and challenges to marine wildlife. The initiatives he announced include accelerating construction of at least one new icebreaker and working with Congress for more. He also announced the addition to the Arctic Council's March 16th Arctic Observing Summit of a focus on, on community-based ecological monitoring, getting people involved in ecological monitoring, which is so key. Here are some photos of the President's visit to the High North in the vicinity of Seward, including the exit in Bear Glaciers out on his cruise. The pictures from this trip are phenomenal. They're available on the White House website. I urge you to go see them. In Bristol Bay, the President met with native fishermen on Kanakanak Beach, focusing on the protection of salmon runs in Bristol Bay, the most important salmon run in the world, with large importance for commercial and subsistence fishing. He met with residents and, and participated in cultural performance at Dillingham Middle School. In Kotzebue, in Alaska, the president made remarks in a visit on coastal resilience. The initiatives announced, and there were many, more than 40 presidential commitments were made while he was in Alaska, including empowering the Denali Commission to coordinate federal, state, and tribal responses to coastal erosion and resilience issues. The National Geospatial Agency, NSF and the USGS, will be leading public-private partnerships for high-resolution maps and elevation models for Alaska and the Arctic overall, which is very important, especially for resource management, disaster management, climate change resilience, and more. And, and, and more. Regarding what we do next, we will move out aggressively in the Arctic Executive Steering Committee to ensure coordinated implementation of the initiatives announced by the President in Alaska. As I said, more than 40 specific commitments ranging from security to science to maritime to tribal engagement. OMB, our Office of Management and Budget, will ensure the agency's fiscal year 17 budget reflect, or requests reflect funding for the initiatives where needed. The Arctic Executive Steering Committee will coordinate closely with the Arctic Research Commission and IARPIC on follow-up to research components of the new initiatives with a special focus on the sharing of data. And let me close with that particular point on data sharing. There is a vast amount of data being collected about the Arctic by a variety of agencies across all Arctic nations. We can do a much better job of sharing and improving the exploitation of that data. Count on us to focus on that in 2016. Thank you. <laughs>